Hello again, everyone. I am here finally with my uh, long overdue video about Cosmo Air Light paper and fountain pens and other media. I did do some testing with other media as well. I have this Cosmo Note notebook that I got from Yoseka Stationery. It's in an A5 size. I purchased that because this notebook was a little less expensive than some of the ones on Etsy, for example, where you have to pay shipping from Japan. These have been selling out super fast on, um, on Yoseka, so I'm gonna put a link below, but that does not guarantee that it will be in stock. Um, and I don't know anyone else who sells it as of this point in time, but you might be able to find some with some Googling. And certainly Cosmo Air Light paper is becoming more available. And right now I have it housed in this Rotorfaden A5 notebook. I'll put a link to this below. Uh, it's, it's not all that popular, but you can get it at Bomb Kuchen uh, and directly through their company. But I'll put a link to the Bomb Kuchen uh, link for this product. Okay, so before I get in here, so this has a first page that is a little bit uh, textured. This is not part of the paper. This is just sort of like an end paper here. I left the first page uh, blank, and this particular paper is not a bright white. I would say that it is probably a little bit of an off white. Let me see if I can find. Um, so this is a pad of Tomoe River paper that I purchased from, um, where did I purchase this? From Naname Cafe Notes, from Naname. Uh, you can see that this is a little bit more white uh, but it's not all that different. Here, I'll put it up a little bit closer so you can see, and my light tends to be a little bit yellow in here. So um, you can see it's a little bit more off-white than this paper, but it's almost white, I would say, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, so basically, in order to test this, I, I wrote little writing samples with all of my fountain pens that I had inked at any given time. So this was over a little bit of a period of time. Uh, one of the, and I'll show you, there's actually several pages and I'll go through each of my test pages. But one of the things that I noticed right away is that it, it makes for a very smooth writing experience with most pens. I would say that uh, whereas the new Tomoe River paper, as I've mentioned on the channel before, is not the greatest with broader nibbed pens, it's, it seems perfectly passable for fine nibbed pens. But I would say almost the opposite is true. And I say almost the opposite because some fine nibs actually work great on this paper, but some felt just you had a little bit more feedback than normal. But for broad nibs, it's fantastic. And they slide on the paper beautifully. It, this paper shows the, um, the ink colors really, really vibrantly. Ink colors tend to show up darker on this paper than uh, other papers. I don't have any papers to compare. I do plan to do a comparison video of different papers at some point, but this is just to discuss the uh, Cosmo Air light paper. And this is essentially my search for a replacement for Tomoe River paper because the new Tomoe River paper is not my favorite. And so, Colors show up beautifully. This was not the paper. This was me running out of ink <laughs> in that particular pen. And uh, so, like I've said before, I, I mentioned on the channel before that my testing of this paper was not very scientific because, uh, and I wish some of this sheen would show off better on the camera, that like this Visconti um, breeze with Krishna Pakaza. Uh, you can see a ton of really nice sheening, but I don't think it's coming off. Oh, there in the light, you can see it a little bit. Um, it's, it has a, a ton of really nice sheen. It really brings out sheen. It really brings out shimmer. Uh, it makes the colors more vibrant, like I was saying. Um, but going back to what I was saying about how this wasn't all that scientific, because I got this notebook after I got uh, a couple of different packs of multiple kinds of paper. So basically I got a little uh, tester booklet with a variety of different kinds of paper from uh, one company, which I can't remember. <laughs> and whatever the company is that makes Tomoe River paper, I also got a larger uh, sampler set 
of different papers, which I think actually includes the Cosmo Air paper. But then I got this notebook and I thought, well, I'm just going to start writing in it and see how I feel, sort of like a pretest for, for the multiple notebooks <laughs> or the multiple papers that I was going to test out. And I liked it so much that I just kept testing and I have not actually tested the other papers. <laughs> I mean, there could be other papers other than the Cosmo Air Light that turn out to be even better than this. Or I, I think with these papers, these fountain pen friendly papers, they're very different from each other. So they're not necessarily going to be better better than one another. They might just be you know, more to your particular liking. But so far, I'm really liking this one. And as you can see, because this is thicker than Tomoe River paper, you don't get as much bleed through. And uh, I think actually the little bit of color that you're seeing here is just uh, uh, ink that rubbed off of this page onto that page. But you can see, you can see the writing on the page before, but it's, but it's not so um, it's not like in your face. Like sometimes with the thinner Tomoe River papers, you can really see things through. Um, but I really like how it brings out also lighter inks like this Vinta Peria and Sailor Manio Haha. They show up really nicely and darker than normal. So that's also nice. It'll show off those lighter colored inks. And like I said, shows off sheening and shading. You know, shading is a good, that's a good question. Um, you can see a little bit here with this um, Robert Oster Hot Pink, where you've got a little bit of variation. Um, I think it shows it off fairly well. I'm trying to see if there was a pen that had, yeah, like like with this uh, Sydney Lavender, you can you can see the shading pretty well. So the first few pages are just different fountain pens and inks. So I have not done any extended writing with this notebook because I have not been using this notebook for journaling yet. Uh, however, I do have a Cosmo Air Light notebook lined up to do a, um, a commonplace book in. So that's, that's a setup that I'll talk about in another video. But for now, this was just testing different inks, different pens, different widths to see how I liked it. And I, I really am trying to get some of that sheen which today it's a little dark in here because of the day so um here yo know, here's another one where you can see a pretty good shading because it's a pretty wide nib this lamy turquoise so just a variety of inks and pens showing up really nicely and then here on the back of this page, and uh, let's take a look at the other page in addition, you can't see any bleed through from any of these things on this page. I mean, you can see no more bleed through, I would say, than, than writing on fountain pens on the opposite page. So I just use a few different tools here. Uh, this is a sign pen. This is a Pigma graphic pen that is thicker than the normal uh, Micron pen, uh, Pigron Micron. Pigma Micron, uh, Pentel Energel. All, one thing I will say, like the Uniball Air, although this is a very smudgy pen generally on pretty much any paper, but some, you know, some were still a little, they're fine now, they're not smudgy anymore, but I smudged them fairly quickly after writing with them, and you can see. Um, I, I would say that this would even be great for, you know, writing with a Micron. In, in your book, it, it works very well. Uh, one thing that didn't show up very well is this uh, Derwent Graphic Gray, uh, essentially like a Micron pen, but Derwent's brand in gray. That didn't come off very well. Here I was running out of ink in a couple of things, so don't use that as an example. Uh, this was me trying to paste a piece of paper on with a uh, tape runner. Works great, it's like, you know, it's not resisting the glue whatsoever. And then here I had um, even more, <laughs> even more pens to test. And here I did a little bit of, um, and this is fun. This was, this was my husband coming through and testing some pens here. And then here I just did some um, 
individual pens a little in a little larger writing to see how that would look. The uh, Pilot Con Pecky actually looks really nice. You can see some really nice sheen on there, which you normally can't see all the time, and it has some great shading on it. Um, but here I did some watercolor swatches. I tried to pick a lighter color. So these are all, are they all? No, I think it's a mix of Daniel Smith and Schmincke watercolors. So this is um, Titanium Buff by Daniel Smith. I tried to try a lighter color. This is, I think, Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. This is Daniel Smith, um, ooh, was that a turquoise? It's a turquoise, but it's, I wanted to do something that would be um, granulating. And then this is a darker color. This is Schmincke. I'm forgetting the color, but it's a dark violet color. Um, and basically, my my determination is that I'm not a big fan of this paper for watercolor. I actually think I prefer the watercolor look on Tomoe River paper. Um, obviously, neither of these are watercolor papers, so you're not going to get that absorbent quality. So basically, it took a little while to dry, and then um, it's not going to have that luminous watercolor quality necessarily on this paper. However, uh, you know, you can't really see, I did some wet media here and you can't really see it on the next page, which is kind of amazing. And uh, the buckling was minimal. I mean, I didn't do the whole page in watercolor, but there's a little bit of buckling here, but not a whole lot. Um, this was with my big uh, music nib from Franklin Kristoff. These were markers that I had these inks in. And for some reason, the sheen actually did not show up as well uh, from the marker. I don't know if that's just the way the ink is in the marker or if it's the paper. Not quite sure. Um, and some more sign pens, uh, erasable pens. One thing that I did notice, which was kind of interesting, so this is a Pilot Friction pen. I don't know if you can see. So when I first started using the pen, it had a little bit of railroading, what I would say. Um, and this is this is one of the reasons why I'm not so crazy about ballpoints generally, as you is you don't always get a really smooth line. But I felt like that was a little bit um, amplified on this paper. So um, if you use a roller ball, this might not be the best paper for you. Um, so and I tried this is a platinum desk pen. This actually worked really well really well. I, I was super impressed with that. These are various pencils. Um, these all down here, um, these three were Palomino pencils and um, the black wing, wing Palomino pencils and they erase really well on this paper. Um, and this was a uh, oh, what are those things called? It's it's the water soluble pencil that turns really dark. And and I actually got some ink in my sample. I wasn't a big fan of how this um, wetted out on this paper. I, I have to say that this probably would not be my first choice for wet media. And you don't get as much of the sort of crinkly sound if that's something you like with the Tomoe River paper, which I kind of liked. Uh, that when you would put wet media on it, the paper would get really nice and crinkly and wavy um, and kind of thicken up. Uh, I don't think this is going to do that as much. So here I just dropped some inks, um, basically what was down in the bottom of a dropper, super tiny little um, drops, but then I blew them around to see they, they dried nicely. Um, these are pretty pigmented, so some of it might still come off, but... Uh, you can probably see the amazing sheen there pretty well. Um, that's what I'm what I'm seeing even on these smaller samples, but the camera is just not picking it up as well. Um, but so, but so I think this paper would be great for pencil, great for uh, sign pens, um, felt tip pens. Uh, obviously fountain pens, <laughs> all that sort of thing. But I think that roller balls may not work as well. And um, it, watercolor is just not my preference on here. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, water soluble media. But this was my, my husband playing with some of my pens, uh, which was fun because uh, he has completely different handwriting than, than me. I would say pretty nice handwriting. So this is something interesting. So he did this, he wrote this first and then um, 
wrote some additional samples up here in the corner and he had touched the page with his hands quite liberally. <laughs> um, and so this is what ended up happening with some of the skin oils in his hands had rubbed off on the paper and then it created a resist to the ink here. Um, this is gonna happen on any fountain pen friendly paper, but I kind of wanted to show you the, the results on this paper. Um, it'll show, it'll do that on any fountain pen friendly paper because the paper is not absorbent. And um, actually, you know, you could even get this on watercolor paper, which is absorbent. So oil, skin oils are pretty pervasive, <laughs> but you you need to watch out for that pretty much on any paper. All right, so I think that's it. There were some here as well. Oh, this was the samples of my uh, current favorites for fountain pens and inks that I did recently that I tested out on this paper. So I will put a link below down to that video. Um, this particular notebook comes with this little um, pen guide where you can see this through the paper. Here, I'll show you on a clean page. You probably can see that now. You can see it pretty well in real life. And then the other side, this is a grid, and then the other side has lines. The lines are a little too wide apart for me. So um, I'm not writing that big, and that's just not my preferred line spacing, so I'm usually using this side. Uh, this is from Yamamoto. Ya Yamamoto. Yamamoto paper is who makes the uh, Cosmo Air light. And they also, I think they also make the um, Tomoe River. So anyway, I don't know why they decided to have a completely different process, but there it is. But uh, I hope that was helpful just to see how things show up. Basically, the writing itself is really, really comfortable. It's not, it's a completely different thing from the old Tomoe River paper. So if you're looking for something that's going to be exactly like that, this is not it. Um, but I think that even though it's not a similar writing experience, it's just as enjoyable to me. Uh, the paper almost feels cushioned when you write on it but but it's not it it gives no feedback at all which is kind of interesting i'm not quite sure how it can feel cushioned without feedback at the same time but it does and um i think that uh yoseka stationery did a video on the cosmo air light paper and they were talking about how they thought that the uh, paper was writing with you when you were writing. So I think that's a pretty accurate description. It's like there's there's not a lot of feedback to the paper itself. It's a very smooth writing experience, but I think you kind of have to write with it yourself to really know <laughs> how it feels to you, um, even regardless of how it feels, which I like the, the feel of writing on this paper. Um, but again, I need to I need to do some long writing with individual pens, which I have not done yet. Uh, but uh, even notwithstanding the feel of the paper, I think it shows off inks incredibly well. I think I would probably even put up with a less uh, glorious writing experience than this actually is uh, to put up to to get this this amount of emphasis of the color and sheening and all of that. So it's really nice, and it, I think it's better than Tomoe River paper in that aspect. Um, it's definitely thicker. So if you're looking for a really super thin paper, this is not gonna be it. But if you're looking for a paper that's a little bit thicker, that is really, really fountain pen friendly, I would say also very uh, drawing pencil friendly and drawing pen friendly. Uh, like I said, the only thing that I didn't have a great result with is a rollerball pen and a ballpoint pen, but uh, I don't like those anyway. So, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my pens were not running out of ink or anything when I started writing with them, but I was still getting that railroading but you know, ballpoints are my absolute least favorite kind of pen. Um, I would say in order of, of pens that I like, fountain pen is definitely first, um, and there's so many different kinds. So, you know, as a category, fountain pen first, then I would say probably felt tip pens and then maybe sign pens, uh, which, which are kind of the same thing. Felt, uh, sign pens do have felt tips and, um, after that, gel pens would probably be next. And then ballpoints would be nowhere on my list because I do not like them. <laughs> so, um, you know, the erasable ink with the friction pens I put up with because sometimes I do want a pen that is erasable. But they're they're not my favorites. They're, they're not in my list of three favorite pens. 
but any, but my three favorite pens they all work well on this paper and like I said I think it would be really good for pencil drawing as well uh, but not necessarily watercolor uh, unless you don't mind the completely different look of the watercolor uh, as you see on whichever page that is I think I, yeah so unless this is the kind of look that you like uh, where it, it looks sort of um, artificial because you, you can't really get a realistic quality with watercolor on this paper but you know it's, and it's going to vary by by color and all that although um, granulation does show up pretty well but um, but that's the extent of it and it looks kind of streaky when you when you paint with it so it's not my choice for that but I think that's all I wanted to cover so if you have any questions feel free to ask them below and I'll answer them when I can uh, I'm really happy to have found this paper because I think that this is probably going to be the new paper for me for fountain pens at the very least uh, I still am going to do some testing, like I said, of those other papers. Uh, it might be a little while before I get that together on uh, YouTube, but my plan is to do that at some point. So yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, ask below. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.